Folks, we intend to distinguish Johnny X from our regular 1025R in a little more sophisticated way in the future. But for now, at least you'll know. We're gonna put some X's on Johnny here. Beautifully colored in blue so that you can tell the difference. X for experimental. Extreme, experimental, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So that's what it's going to be. Hey, we're going to do the first project today with little Johnny X and see if we can tell any difference. We've got our new Johnny right here beside it. We may compare a couple things, but we've got a little driveway work to do. Let's get started. Val from Area Diesel suggested that we push into a pile and just see if we could tell any difference. Um, off camera, I tried this in low range and both tractors would spin their wheels and it's kind of muddy here, so that wasn't good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try in high range. Machines in high range, I'll run them at the same RPM, I'll tell you what I'm gonna run them at then. And we're just gonna uh, go into the pile. It's not like I'm gonna try to ram in, but I'm just gonna go steadily in. And I'm going to hold the pedal all the way down and see what happens. This is a standard 1025R. This one's got 3.8 hours on it. Might as well tear it up right at the beginning, right? 2700 RPM, here we go. Pushing all the way down, all the way down and holding it. There we go. I pushed it all the way down, held it all the way down, killed the tractor. It wasn't a real comfortable feeling, was it? No. That feels like abuse. Obviously, you wouldn't run your tractor this way, but it's just for demonstration. It's not going to hurt at once. The only difference in uh, the configuration here is this bucket has teeth on it, but it's not going to matter. I'm not trying to judge how much I pick up or how far in I go. Um, more just judging how the tractor behaves, the differences. Okay. You can identify Johnny X now. We got X's all over. Pretty high class, huh? <laughs> well, we want you to be able to see the difference. We want you to understand that when we're using this tractor, we're not using a stock tractor. We're using something that's been modified. You need to know that. If you happen to just tune into our very first episode and say, wow, that 1025R has got a lot of spunk. Well, this is why. 2,700 RPM. We'll go steadily into the pile. Pedal all the way down. Okay? See the difference? So in that test, uh, we drove it all the way in, put the pedal all the way down. You could hear the squeal of the pressure relief valve in the, in the hydrostat transmission, but the engine uh, didn't bog down. The engine did not stall. The stock 1025R seems quite well balanced in that sense, that the engine and the hydrostatic uh, each reach their limit basically at the same time, right? I mean, even on the first test with the standard 1025R, we were able to uh, force the hydrostat into pressure relief, but it was at about the same time that the engine stalled. Here, the engine's got a lot more power, a lot more ability than the hydrostatic drive. Hey, we'll get into some Actual numbers, we'll, we'll do a pull test with it, which is essentially the same thing, but we'll get a, a scale hooked up so we can test that, compare the differences um, in a more geeky video. But for right now, we got to do some work on the driveway. I'm going to put the land plane on this machine, just see how it feels. Gonna get a bucket full of rock and put out in front of the trash dumpster. Even with the rim guard, we need this blade for ballast. I, I see so many people that try to use these subcompact tractors without ballast. I, I just don't understand. Ready? Yeah, do I have bushings? Uh, no bushings in there. There's a little bushing. Oh, okay. That's better, but it still doesn't feel like enough ballast. 
If I do much work with the loader, I put something heavier than this blade on. We've widened the driveway a little bit here, and we're just having trouble holding it. Johnny is as big as the garbage truck. Uh, no. The rest of the driveway is in pretty good shape, but I'm going to uh, run a couple trips on it anyway, partially just because I want to play with new Johnny X. And uh, I do need some rock right at the end of it, uh, where it, 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 it's uphill and it just keeps falling back. As people exit the driveway, they spin a little bit. It makes it real bumpy. I'll see if I can improve that a little bit. but. That's an ongoing problem that's going to take longer. Move that out a little more. Well, I want big piles there. Oh, okay. Because it's going to push it all down. Yeah. The driveway's pretty wet. It's a perfect time to run the, the land planes because it'll be able to dig in pretty easily. to show you some longer scenes of the land plane in action in this episode. As we were watching it, Christy and I both found it kind of mesmerizing, being able to see the rock just flow over the back of both of the cutter bars. Basic operation of a land plane is quite easy. Arrange it so the land plane is level left to right and level front to rear. Then just drop your three point all the way down and go. Once you've watched it work a little bit, you may want to raise up the back cutter bar or lower it or whatever works to suit your needs. You can do those adjustments easily with the top link of the three point hitch. In addition to just moving around the rocks on top, I like to dig in just a little bit uh, to that solid surface that you see there. I just I want to mix that in just a little bit. It doesn't have to be much, but, but just enough kind of the, any holes that are developing to, to get them filled up. Running a land plane, optimally you never pick it up. You just leave it down all the time. Keep circling.
I probably need some more rock right in here. Over the years, it's, the rock hasn't got pushed out of the driveway, but what's happened is, is as the driveway kind of packs down or compresses more, the soil seems to get pushed out a little bit. Um, so I, I think that the net result is that, that my driveway is laying a little lower than the side, right beside it. I think I'm gonna have to get some more rock just to, to raise that up so the water doesn't stand in the middle of the driveway. Johnny X here at full throttle and have been for this entire time. The temperature is uh, on the temperature gauge for water temperature is very low. Uh, I, it, it's a load for, for Johnny X here, but but it's not you know it's not overloaded in any sense. Um, so I, I think it's going to be able to handle it fine. I don't see any reason why it would get hot at this point. I'm pulling a full box at this point. At this point, I'm trying to pull a box full of rock the length of the driveway here so I can put some extra right up next to the road. Now what I'm trying to do is bring some of these fines, you know, the powder, up here closer to the road. When I have just the big rocks, the, the, the cars are able to just kind of spin on them as they go out. I was hoping maybe if I got some of these pines up here that it would pack down better. That's not the end all solution, I get that. I've got a, a, a plan for a much larger project. Who knows, hopefully this summer. I'll talk a little about that project now. What I intend to do is to take that culvert pipe out and replace it with a longer culvert pipe. And as a part of that project, I would like to raise this part of the driveway so it's not so steep. Um, the only reason that I'm worried about the steepness there is because that's where people bounce, bounce to get out on the road. Uh, they're trying to accelerate to get on the road at the same time they're trying to go uphill to go one way or the other. And it's just, it's just causing the rock to, to displace really easily. So what I'd like to do is, is level out the driveway. So in other words, raise it here where the tractor is such that it's essentially flat and then begin to, to slope gradually from the tractor here onward. Uh, that's, that's my goal, and I haven't, you know, I haven't started that project yet because I really would just like to start with a new culvert that's wider so that a semi-tractor trailer could get in here. Uh, my brother Tom complained when he came in here with his semi. He could, couldn't make the turn very easily, so he, uh, he wanted me to have a wider culvert. Yeah, I mean, uh, nobody else has tried to back a big truck down, down the road here, um, and he, he did. What I would like to have is the ability for a big truck to drive down, turn around, and come back out. Uh, we have a lot of times where we end up uh, unloading uh, large equipment here on the road, and it's, it's not very safe, and it's just not very comfortable. So we, we would prefer to be able to allow those trucks to drive in um, and be more accommodating to those drivers, you know, trying to be kind. And uh, so eventually that's what we're going to do, but not today. I'm going to work a little bit more on this rock here, see if I can get it leveled a little bit better. Uh, and then, Christy, I'm pretty happy with the driveway. I, I think uh, we really need some more rock at some point to raise it up. Not, yeah. There's plenty of rock from a standpoint of keeping it, uh, you know, solid. We, we don't need more rock for that reason. We just need more rock because it needs to be higher. Um, we've, we've talked a lot of times about how you can revitalize a driveway without adding more rock. Well, this one is revitalized. It's fine in that sense. But when it rains, water is coming in. And 
I think it's going to be hard for me to dig ditches off to the side to get that water to drain off. I, even though it's going to cost some money, I actually think it would be easier for me to get more rock than to, uh, to try to you know, regrade uh, the sides of the driveway and, and, and get the water to flow off. Now to that end, I've not put the kind of crown in it that I typically would like to. I don't really see the point in a crown right now because if I create much of a crown, I'm just going to have water standing in both tire tracks, and those are the very places where I create the chuck holes by driving through water, right? So, so I would just, uh, it, it it's cra sounds crazy, but I would about as soon have the water stand in the middle of the road where I'm not driving as, as in the tire tracks where I am driving. Yeah, I know, short-term thinking, but sometimes we do that. I have a hard time getting this perfect and to be honest I don't know that it matters because the first time a, a truck comes out of here they bounce 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 and mess it all up anyway so and when I say a truck it's you know my truck just as easy as anybody else's <laughs> I'm not blaming anybody else Okay, I think that's good enough up here. I'm going to make an adjustment here for the last pass. I'm going to shorten the top link a little bit to get that back cutter raised just a little bit. I don't want it cutting on this last pass. I would prefer uh, to have the front cutter doing most of the cutting and the back one just kind of do a little bit of leveling. What I found here today is that the, uh, the chunks that come off are wet and they're leaving little piles. And I think those little piles are actually going to turn into chuck holes and uh, just a rough, rough road if, uh, if I don't watch it. So I want the back to be up high enough here this time to allow some rock to go under it. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll smooth a little bit better. You can use a device like this. You don't have to follow any rules. I, I know there's going to be a bunch of people comment, you have to do it this way, you should have done it this way, you should have done it another way. Don't follow any rules if you don't want to. Use it in a way that works for you for this particular time and this particular application. It may be different the next time you use it, right? Don't worry about that. Use it in a way that works for you. Um, you know, nobody's grading or keeping score. First thoughts about Johnny X? Oh my, oh my, Johnny X. The engine's a lot more powerful. I, I, I'm pretty certain I can tell in this scenario, I just didn't have any lugging issue at all. This is a five foot land plane. So I, I just, I'm, I'm really proud of how it's handled it. Now, sometimes you'll spin out when you get a big load, but uh, today the, 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 the rock and just the, just, the conditions here, I'm, I'm not spinning. Um, and even when I get full, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just plowing right on through. So yeah, I'm, Johnny X is a, a definite change. I can't describe exactly why, right? Because uh, the, the, the hydrostatic shouldn't be getting a lot more to the ground. But what I can describe is that the RPM is not dropping uh, when I get to, to lugging it just a little bit. It's a noticeable difference. You know, we tested this thing the other day and it tested 32 PTO horsepower. At first I was thinking, well, that's going to make this a 1032X, right? Nah, I don't think that's the right way to think about this. After all, it's engine horsepower that they put on the, on the label. That's how they number the tractors. So a 1025 is only supposed to have 18 PTO horsepower. So I think it would be fair. I mean, I can't really test the engine horsepower at the flywheel. But I think it would be fair to call this thing a 1038X. I don't believe that would be uh, exaggerating in the least bit. Uh, certainly six horsepower difference between the engine and the PTO is, uh, is I think, a fair estimation. So that's what we're going to go with, 1038X. We'll have to get some stickers. Oh, I heard a whistle. <laughs> Well, I think I got the rear cutter a little higher than I intended. Doesn't look like it's doing anything at all. I actually wanted it just to level out those little humps that you see there on the right side. It also looks like the right side is a little bit lower than the left, so I probably created some problems there as well. 
oh well, there will be another opportunity to clean it up. It doesn't have to be perfect every time. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Come here, kitty. Come on. No. He just wants to be on the plow.